Interpreting is a communicative practice that has existed for thousands of years, long before the translation of written texts. In very simple terms, it can be defined as the activity of saying what someone has just said in another language. As indicated by the word saying, interpreting is usually distinguished from translation based on the modality of language involved, that is, speech versus writing. Where translation is used as a generic term to refer to translational activities in general, interpreting is often labeled as oral translation. But the distinction between oral and written, or spoken and written, does not fully capture what makes interpreting different from translation, or what sets interpreting apart as a special form of translation. The defining characteristic is the immediacy with which interpreting is performed in a given situation. As posited in the definition proposed by Otto Kade in the 1960s, the source text in interpreting is available for processing only once, and likewise, the interpreter's output cannot be reviewed or revised afterwards. In other words, interpreting means producing a first and final rendering of a source message, with little or no opportunity for correction. Whether the source and or target texts are spoken, written or signed is not the defining criterion. Immediacy implies that interpreting is done under time pressure. The task must be accomplished here and now, in real time. This also means that in performing the task, interpreters must largely rely on the knowledge they have mentally available. This includes knowledge of their languages as well as knowledge of the subject matter. Except for some glossaries or similar documents, interpreters cannot look up what they do not know while they are working. Effective preparation for an interpreting assignment is therefore extremely important, as will be explained in more detail in Unit 3 of this module. The interpreting process essentially consists in source language comprehension followed by target language production in real time. Effective comprehension of the source message is obviously fundamental, as the interpreter can only re-express what has first been fully understood. In the comprehension process, the input, that is, what is heard or seen, interacts with what is already known. The knowledge required is first and foremost linguistic, as we cannot understand a message in a language we do not know. This includes idiomatic phrases, but also more technical expressions and specific usage, or registers of speech. But the role of knowledge goes much further and also includes relevant general knowledge or world knowledge and knowledge of the specific subject matter as well as situational knowledge, that is, knowledge about the speaker and the audience and about the purpose of communication in a given setting. Speech production is also a complex knowledge-based process, but it is often felt to be more natural and not given as much consideration. The key difference in interpreting is that the ideas to be expressed are not the interpreters, but are derived from the comprehension process. The basic process of interpreting can take two different forms, depending on the temporal relationship between the source and target texts. These two basic modes are known as consecutive interpreting and simultaneous interpreting. Consecutive is the primeval, the basic mode of interpreting, and means that the interpretation comes after the source text, or a part of it. This mode is typically found in dialogic communication, but can also be used for longer speeches, in which case interpreters will rely on a special note-taking technique to support their memory of what they need to render. By contrast, in simultaneous interpreting, the interpretation is produced not after, but in parallel with source text reception. This occurs with a short delay known as 
time lag, which results from the need to process, to comprehend the source message before it can be re-expressed. When used with spoken languages, simultaneous interpreting creates acoustic interference between the two speech streams. It therefore requires special equipment, except in so-called whispered interpreting, when interpreters speak in a low voice to a listener right next to them. Seated in a soundproof booth, simultaneous interpreters listen to the source text with headphones and at the same time speak their interpretation into a microphone linked to receivers. This form of simultaneous interpreting is commonly used in international conferences and multilingual events. The process as such, however, is also the core of interlingual re-speaking or trans-speaking as a way of producing live titles for media content and live events. Therefore, the skills required for simultaneous interpreting are the object of this module of the ILSA course. Once acquired, they will allow you to listen to a message in the source language and at the same time produce your rendering in the target language. The unusual task of simultaneous comprehension and re-expression requires a lot of practice in order to be performed at a high level. This module of the ILSA course will guide you through that skill acquisition process. Based on a thorough understanding of the task, which can be acquired through the readings and materials offered for this first unit, Unit 2 will introduce you to exercises such as shadowing and paraphrasing, which are believed to be useful preliminary steps in the skill acquisition process. Unit 3 will then focus on preparation. Unit 4 will take you from basic interpreting skills to advanced levels of strategic performance. Finally, the competence to assess the quality of your performance will be the subject of Unit 5.